Your next questions on a calculus paper will now be also to find the derivatives, but using your laws. Usually two sums, like in the supplementary paper, I'm going to do the two sums with you, but also you're going to try and do it by yourself. Okay, so let's see. I have to evaluate dx of 1 plus 6 root x. Look at that sum. 8.2.1. It says I have to find dx of 1 plus 6 root x. What does this d mean here? This d just means find the derivative. Now grade 12 quickly. Do you see the word first principles? No, it just says evaluate. It just says that you need to evaluate. You didn't see the word first principles. So you're not going to go into that limit as h tends to zero. Nothing. You use your plain, simple, basic rules. Now listen very carefully to me this afternoon. You cannot find the derivative if you have thirds. So you first need to get rid of thirds. Ma'am, what is thirds? Thirds mean root. You need to get rid of that root. So how do you get rid of it? So you write your one plus Everybody watch carefully. I had some students by me last Monday and they said, ma'am, that is x to the power of 1. I said, that's awesome. But then they said, ma'am, but there's no number there. Is it 1? I said, no, no, that is a 2. Remember, this is square root. We do not put the Two there, but if I say cube root, we put the three there. If I say fourth root, we will put the four there. But if it is square root, we expect you to know that there is a two there. So how do I go from third to exponential? Just listen, put this into your brain. Inside top, outside bottom. I'm going to say that again. Inside of the root goes to the top of the fraction. Outside of the root goes to the bottom of the fraction. Can you see? So let me just show you something. If I give you x and I put a 3 there and I put a 2 there, in exponential form it will be x inside top, outside bottom. Do you have that now? That's going from third to exponential. We did it in grade 10 a little bit, in grade 9, but we tend to forget these small little things and that is part of calculus as well. Remember exponents runs through almost your whole paper. So I've got the dx, I wrote it in exponential from, from third to exponential and I am ready to go and find the derivative. Grade 12 you write derivative is equal to, you don't, don't put the equal to there, just write dx. What is the derivative of 1. The derivative of 1 is equal to 0. Why? Because it is a constant. It doesn't have an x with it. So the derivative of 1 is 0. Grade 12, you are differentiating with respect to x. This little letter here, this variable tells you you are differentiating with respect to x. So any term that doesn't have an x, its derivative is naught. I'll show you something now, now. So the derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, so come find the derivative here with me. You say a half times 6 is equal to, a half times 6 is equal to 3. Everybody, do you agree with me? Yes. You put your x down and you take away 1 from your exponent. A half minus 1 is minus a half. Now you put this in positive exponential form. We do not like our answer in negative exponential form, right? So you always go back to positive exponential form. Some people even go back to thirds. Just read what they want in your paper. If they say put your answers in positive exponential form, then that is where you stop. Don't go back to thirds if it's not being asked. Otherwise, you're just going to waste time. Positive exponential form, quickly do it with me. You've got the 3 there. The negative or half is connected to the x. So it has to come down to the denominator in order to become positive. And that 
is your answer of 1 plus 6 root x. I hope you all understand that. I said I wanted to show you something. What if I added here plus 4y? And I asked you, what is the derivative of 4y? The majority of you will say, ma'am, the derivative of 4y is 4. Am I correct? But you are differentiating with respect to to x so any term that doesn't have a x with it is seen and regarded as a constant do you understand that it's regarded as a constant so the derivative of a constant will be equal to zero because it is independent of x it doesn't have an x with it so the derivative of 4y will be equal to zero because you are differentiating with respect to x please remember that to look at those small things the next question that we have is also a derivative question and it says that we have to find dy dx if y is equal to 8 minus 3x to the power of 6 divided by 8x to the power of 5. Oh my goodness, first of all, what does dy dx mean? It means find the derivative. We have to find the derivative. That is what it means. And look at the bottom. We have to find the derivative with respect to 2x. So every term that doesn't have a x will be regarded as a constant. Okay, now listen to me. I know that a lot of you want to find the derivative like that. Find the derivative of 8, it's naught. Find the derivative of 3x to the power of 6, 18x5. 5. 5 times 8 is 40, 40x to the power of 4. Then we feel quite happy with ourselves. But it is wrong, grade 12s. You cannot find the derivative of each of those terms individually because, look at the screen quickly, this is one term. This is one term that you see here. It is not three terms. So what we're going to do first is you need to separate this. Now see if you agree with me. Am I correct when I say that this 8 x to the power of 5 needs to divide into the 8 and 8x to the power of 5 needs to divide into 3x to the power of 6. Okay, somebody asked me, ma'am, why don't you put dx on the second step? No, 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 it doesn't matter. You just go back to the sum quickly. Nice question. I love it when you ask questions. You could put it there. It's absolutely no problem that comes from smarty from bankstruff i like that name smarty smarty you don't you can put the you don't have to put the dx there you can put it there you can just put it at the beginning and you can just put it at the end you are not going to lose a mark or you can write it straight down thank you for that question ask me more questions i just love your questions and we're back to the summer and i hope you're all working with me i'm enjoying the session with you look Am I going to find the derivative of 8? And then that, and that, and then that. Of course not. This is one term, and I first need to separate it. So come separate it with me. It's 8 divided by 8x to the power of 5 minus 3x6. The 3x6 also gets 8x to the power of 5. What did I just do? I separated my terms. Now watch closely. Now I am going to just divide like we normally do in mathematics. The 8 and the 8 cross out. And I'm left with 1 on top. X5 minus, okay, 3 over 8. Because obviously 8 can't go into 3. And then I've got X6 on top. I've got X5 at the bottom. So I've got X to the one left. Do you agree with me, everyone? Yes. So now I am going to, I don't like this. I cannot find the derivative if there are x's at the bottom of a fraction. So I first need to take the x5 to the top. If I take it to the top, 
I get x to the negative 5. I'm quite happy with this term here. It's 3 over 8, x to the 1. Am I ready to find my derivative now? Can we just check? Absolutely. Why are we ready to find the derivative? I don't have any x's at the bottom and I have no thirds. Everything is in exponential form. Let's go with our rule. Now we say dy dx is equal to take your exponent times by the number in front. What number is here? An imaginary one. So we put the one down if you want to. So it's negative 5 times 1 is negative 5. Take away 1 from the exponent. Please don't tell me that this is negative 4. Because negative 5, negative 1 is negative 6. And what is the derivative of 3 over 8x to the 1? 1 multiplied by 3 over 8 is 3 over 8. If you take away 1 from the exponent there, just watch me. 1 minus 1 is naught. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. So your x automatically just falls away. Is the sum complete? Almost. We just want to make that exponent positive. So put it over x to the power of 6 minus 3 over 8. And there you have your two derivative questions. Remember quickly. First principles is that long sum, the limit as h tends to 0. Then we had two sums after that where we first had to put all our terms in exponential form. So the root inside top, outside bottom, inside top, outside bottom. Then if I have x's at the bottom, take it to the top. And always see what you're differentiating with respect to. If you're differentiating with respect to x, all the other terms are seen as constants. If it doesn't have an x, it is seen as constants.